Hey everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome back to my channel. We have finally reached the last video from the really old Grease archives. I can't believe it took me this long to edit some of this old footage, but regardless of that, this day trip was too amazing not to share. When you think of Greece, maybe the Cyclotic islands such as the famous Santorini or Mykonos might come to mind, but what about the places that aren't always shown on everyone's Instagram feed? While I'm not a local, after staying in Greece for months at a time these past three years to visit my partner, I can still confidently say that there is so much more to see in this country than the whitewashed walls of the Cyclotic islands. And Meteora is one of those places. I don't exactly remember how I found out that this place existed, but I just remember seeing an image of what looked so otherworldly. Built in the early Christian times, the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Meteora is the largest archaeological site of Greece in terms of surface area. Its surreal, massive sandstone cliffs holding 24 monasteries are unlike anything that I've ever seen. So when I found out that this place was only a day trip away from Athens, I knew I had to go. From Meteora, we just got off of our train from Athens. It was about a three to four hour ride to get here. Definitely took a nap on the train. I was so tired. We woke up at 6.20 this morning. Before boarding our train at 7.20, we barely made it. We're just staring blankly at Meteora behind these buildings. I didn't do any research before I came here. It was kind of a last, last minute trip. And I don't know if we need a car to ride. It seems like everyone took a taxi, so we might have to do that. Daniel's eating some sandwiches that Christian made. Thank you, Christian. Already Look left. how far this is. My sister wanna walk. <laughs> it's like two miles from here, and it's like two miles up. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if we can walk up that. I think we need a taxi. I'll give you something special too, you know what I'm saying? We got a taxi. $10 only. To the top. To the top. $10 only. As per almost all of my trips that summer, this was a very impromptu trip with little preparation. In order to get up to the monasteries, you have the option of hiking or booking a tour bus, but because we were short on time, we decided to take a 10 euro taxi to get up, which was so worth it and, well, necessary. Since we were traveling in the scorching hot summer weather, our first stop was to a food truck for some refreshments. <laughs> Ended up grabbing a taxi with our very nice taxi driver Christos that dropped us off. It cost 10 euros cash to get up here. And then of course, Dano and I stopped by to get some watermelon popsicles. My like favorite thing ever. I think this is my sixth one that I've had in Greece. And now we're just sitting in the shade to cool off. Have my Lipton ice tea in front of us is the Great Meteora, one of the monasteries that supposedly closes at 3 p.m. today. So beautiful. The first people to use the cliffs of Meteora were Orthodox Christian hermit monks between the 9th and 10th century who used its caves for isolation and quiet. While they relied on the locals for safety and food, it wasn't until the 12th century when a monk named Nilos gathered the monks to create a more organized, monastic community. Two centuries later, another monk named Athanasios climbed on the highest second rock to establish the Great Meteoro, the first of the Meteora monasteries. The 16th century was the best period of Meteora monasteries with the largest population of monks in active monasteries. Today, only six of the 24 monasteries remain active. Out of those six, only two of them, Agios Stefanos and Rusanu, are convents by nuns, while the other four are run by male monks. We paid three euros to enter the Great Meteoro, and while they do lend you a scarf to wrap around your waist, I would recommend wearing a long skirt or bringing one with you if you are a female. Thank you for on the rock. Mm -hmm. And they have a little garden in the back. How dope is Dude, that? look how pretty the rock is too, though. So pretty it is. 
just got out of the monastery that was really really beautiful they made us wear a skirt because i was wearing pants and i knew that you had to wear a long attire but i didn't know that you had to wear a skirt there was a room that was really pretty that you weren't allowed to take videos or pictures in so obviously i did not but that was like the prayer room that was really really breathtaking so the monastery looks big but we could only enter like this part christian isn't here today and i'm gonna fly the drone for the first time because he's the only one that's been flying the drone because he like loves flying it so i'm gonna fly it later for the first time and i just hope that i don't crash this thing down the rock all right guys let's head to the next place yeah oh my yes let's go we got our second popsicle because it's so hot. Best popsicles. Woo. Close to the great Meteoro, this holy monastery of Arlam is the second biggest monastery of Meteora. It was founded in the mid 14th century by a monk named Varlam, hence the name, when he climbed the cliff with some other monks. After Varlam passed away, the cliff was abandoned, and it wasn't until the early 15th century when two brothers from Ioannina, the priest monks Theophanes and Ectario, decided to enlarge the chapel and build a monastery. While we weren't allowed to film it, today it hosts a museum with a myriad of relics, art, and manuscripts. There is also a church, but what makes this monastery distinguishable is its large outdoor open space offering a spectacular view of the other cliffs. Like the Great Meteoro, the entry fee was 3 euros, but you are not able to borrow a pareo scarf, so you have to purchase one if you aren't wearing the right attire. Just got out of the second monastery. It was very beautiful, a lot smaller than the first one that we went to, but the museum was really cool. I love looking at all the old artifacts sitting in the shade. It's so hot. We still have about three hours left until we have to catch the train. So I think we're just gonna chill for a bit in the shade. I don't think we want to visit all the monasteries. One, because we can't walk that much. It's really hot. And two, we have to pay for entry every time. So I think the goal today is to try to fly the drone and not crash it. They also gave us these like bareo scarves to put around our waist. We had to pay for these ones, but we did get to keep it, which is nice. Except they're ugly. <laughs> this is cute. This one's kind of cute. Better. This one's butterflies. Cute butterflies. I got an ugly plaid. I get, you get the redneck version. You guys want to sit in the corner? Can you walk? You guys don't want to walk? No? Wow, this is flavorful. So we're about to fly the drone for the first time. The case of my case is too bulky, so I actually have to take it out so that I can connect it to the DJI mini remote. Yeah, see you. We set it up. You can see us. Oh, what? <laughs> Alright, guys, we can do this now. Wait, whoa, whoa. let me put this on the ground, bro. Bro, car's not gonna hit over here, bro. Forward, left, right. Turn, up, down. of an intersection trying to hitchhike to the lookout. We were trying to hitchhike, but we gave up on it because no one stopped. So I called the taxi guy and he's coming in a little bit more than five or so minutes. We have about an hour until we have to go catch the train back. So we're just gonna do a quick stop, take a quick photo and then head down. on the train just got some orange juice the taxi situation that we had was so hilarious so basically what happened was the taxi driver drove and then he was like did you call for a taxi and we were like yes and then we got into the car and then as soon as i showed him the card that the other taxi driver gave me he kept on saying no and then we got out of the taxi so we kept on hitchhiking and then as soon as a car stopped for us during our hitchhike same taxi driver came back and was like no get in the car and i was gonna ditch the taxi driver because I was so frustrated. But then Dino pointed out that we should probably go with the taxi driver because then he would 
drive us down from the lookout as well. So we rode in the taxi and he helped us take some nice pictures. He was telling us where to pose and he was really nice. So yeah, it was quite rushed, but I'm glad that we made it to the lookout. I do wish that we had more time there. We weren't able to get some food, but we just grabbed a bag of popcorn from the local store next to the orange juice place. And now we have a four hour ride back to Athens. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. To this day, Meteora is still one of the most unique and amazing places that I've ever visited. And I'm so grateful that I got to experience even just a couple of hours here. If you haven't already, make sure to click the like and subscribe button for more videos. I can't wait to share more recent travel and lifestyle content with you. I'll catch you in the next one. I think three waters. Yeah. Oh, no. Three teams.